Okay, all right. So uh, now let's look at a couple of examples of naive phase. Um, so we look at a con continuous example. So suppose we have a data set of individuals, and these individuals uh, come from two classes. Some of them are adults, and some of them are children, whatever species. Right. And, uh, and we have two attributes. So the classes are A and C, and we measure their height, and we measure their weight. And what we want to do is we want to get naive Bayes to, to learn to predict whether an individual is uh, a child or an adult based on their height and weight. So what does this mean? This means we have training examples. They're triples, HI, the height of the ith instance, the weight of the ith instance, and the class, adult or child. And let's say we have four adults and uh, 12 children. So what do we do? When we estimate a naive base classifier, the first thing you compute is the prior, right? The prior tells us how prominent are children and adults in this data set. So we have four adults. So the chance, the prior probability of something being adult is four out of 16, which is a quarter. Uh, and uh, the probability of a child is three quarters, great. So what do we do then? Um, these are real numbers, heights and weights are real numbers, so we're gonna model them with a Gaussian. That's a natural choice. Uh, They're usually normally distributed. So, uh, so we need to compute a Gaussian for the height and a Gaussian for the weight. A Gaussian has two parameters, the mean and the variance. And uh, I guess in the, in, the first or the, in the second lecture, we talked about how you estimate the parameters of a Gaussian. So for the mean, you just count the average, and for the variance, you count the deviations of values from the average. So what does it look like in this example? So the mean height of an adult, the way you compute it is you sum up over the instances, which are adults, so over our four example adults, you sum up their heights and divide it by four. Right, simple. The variance, you take that same height, you subtract from it the mean value, that thing that you just computed there, square the difference, add it up, divide it by four, great. So um, I guess if you come from statistics, you know that this is a biased estimate, and, uh, but we're gonna ignore that for now. <coughs> so, uh, and that's it. Now you've got a Gaussian that explains, that models the heights of uh, adults in this case. So you do it for height, you do the same thing for the weights of adults and children. So now you've got two Gaussians. Um, uh, and then we need to do the same thing for children. <coughs> so we get four more parameters, the mean and the variance of the height in children, the mean and the variance of the height uh, of the weight uh, in children. And then, we make the, uh, uh, then we make the independence assumption, which means that we'll need to multiply together these two Gaussians. So let's look at, let's look at it geometrically, what it actually looks like in, uh, in space if we try to draw it. So let's say that this is our data set. So here's the height. Uh, I mean centimeters, here's the weight in kilos. We have two classes, these are our adults, these are our children. So what does this estimation look like? What does it actually do? Uh, we're estimating, so uh, those are the priors. Um, we're estimating the height of the children. So the way to think about this is um, take all of these black dots, which are children, right, and just look at their heights. So imagine just dropping them down on a plane, right, and seeing how, how how these points fall, right? Uh, so you'll get some sort of a histogram of some distribution. This is the distribution of heights for the children. So most of them are small. You get a spike here, and then you get uh, an outlier-looking uh, child, so a, a very tall child uh, right there. Right. <clears throat> so, and what we're doing as part of naive, naive base, we said that we're gonna model it with a Gaussian. This means that we're gonna forget that we ever saw that histogram and just fit a normal curve to it, right? So it's gonna have some mean value, which is about in the middle of them, and some variance, which tries to account for all of these observations in some way, right? So maybe you'll get a, maybe you'll get a Gaussian that looks kinda like that, right? So that's the height of children. And then you do the same thing for the weight of children, right? Again, take a distribution, fit a normal curve to it. And the next thing, assumption of independence, this means that when we're computing the probabilities, we're gonna compute the probability from this Gaussian, compute the probability from that Gaussian, and multiply them together. So we're effectively multiplying together the two Gaussians. And what does a multiplication of two Gaussians look like? Um, it looks like a bump in space. So it looks like one of those bell-shaped things. It's not quite circular because the way I drew this, this has a higher variance than that one. But, um, but, but, but it's kind of like a bell, just elongated along the height um, axis. And here you're looking at it from the top. The dotted lines represent the ISO lines, right? Uh, the ISO lines is every point on the ISO line has exactly the same probability under a Gaussian. 
So, <clears throat> and, and the ones closer to the center are the highest, obviously. Um, so that is the Gaussian. Uh, it's a two-dimensional Gaussian. It results from multiplying together two one-dimensional Gaussians. And that two-dimensional Gaussian represents my, uh, the child observations in my data set. <coughs> so that is my model of what children look like in, 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 this, in this domain. So um, then you do the same thing for adults, and maybe you'll get a Gaussian that looks sort of like that. So another bell with slightly not as spread out, slightly more compact with, with higher mean um, along both the height and the weight. OK, great. So I've estimated the Gaussians. Now a new individual comes in, that x. What I want to do is I want to classify whether that individual uh, is more likely to be a child or an adult. That's the point of the classifier. How, how do I do that? What I have to do is I have to look at this individual's height and weight and compute their probabilities under the model of children and the model of adults. So what is the probability that you would get this height of x under the children class? That's the equation for the Gaussian. I'm not actually going to go through that. Uh, so th this, this part doesn't really matter. Uh, what you care about is this part. Right? So how do you compute that probability? You take the height of this new individual. You subtract from it the mean height of a child, the average height of a child, the height of an average child. Uh, square it and divide it by the uh, variance of heights over children. And you get a number. Uh, so it's not, technically speaking, it's not a probability. It's a density. But we're going to pretend it's a probability because it all works out nicely in the end. Um, so <clears throat> now, if you think of it as a probability, is that going to be a high number? So for this individual, for children, for this Gaussian, are, are we talking about a high number or a low number? Is this, is this a big probability or a small probability? Small probability. OK, so OK, who, who thinks it's going to be small? OK, who, who thinks it's going to be big? All right, nice. OK, it's actually going to be a big number. Right. Why is it a big number? You're talking about the height. Right. And look, this point, yeah, it's pretty far from the mean in weight. It's not very far from the mean as far as height goes. Right. So the height of this individual is actually very, very close to the mean. So this, is, this would be a high number. There is a high chance that a child would have such a height. <clears throat> For the weight, the picture is different, right? Same equation, only now the weight is way off. So this is a, this is a rather heavy individual if it were a child. So the height looks right, but the weight is a little bit high. So you would have high probability here, low probability there. So that's for child. Now the next thing we do is we compute the same things for adults. right? So that's the probability of height given the adult class, weight given the adult class. Big number, small number, the height? Small number now, right? Because we're actually way off the mean. This is the mean, and we're all the way here to the side. And the weight? Big number, right? It's about the right weight for an adult. Okay. So now we have four numbers, and the classifier is going to combine all of them into one using uh, Bayes' rule. So <clears throat> the probability of this set of observations given the adult class, so assuming it's an adult, uh, you multiply together. This is the conditional independence assumption. right? So we have the probability of the height given that it's an adult, and that's a small number. Weight given an adult, big number. Multiply them together, get a number, some number. <clears throat> so that is the overall probability of seeing such a set of uh, symptoms or attributes uh, given that it's an adult. Uh, and that is the same thing for a child class. So you get these two numbers, uh, and then you just put them into, uh, into Bayes' rule, right? So, so the posterior probability of it being an adult is probability of observation, assuming that it was an adult times the prior, divided by the overall probability at the bottom. Okay. So that's, th th that's how you compute uh, the, the uh, the, the estimates, that's, uh, and, and then, so this, this number is either going to be bigger than 0.5 or smaller than 0.5, and if it, is, uh, if it is bigger than 0.5, then what do we say? It's an adult, or at least our classifier thinks so. 